If sine of x is equal to 2 divided by 5, and we know that the angle x is wedged between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, we want to determine the exact value of what cosine of x is and what tan of x is. So when we're given a problem like this and we don't actually know off by heart what the exact value of um, 2 on 5 is, it's not one that we know that pattern for, what we're going to do is we're going to try and represent the information that's given using some form of diagram. And the diagram that we're going to start by drawing off to start with, there's actually going to be two diagrams here, but the first one is going to be a right angled triangle because we know trigonometry is related to not only the unit circle, but also right angled triangles. So let's start off with the right angled triangle that relates the two and the five. And the way that those two things are related is that we know that sine of some angle, and I'll just call it theta as the generic case, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that means I can start to think of 2 as being the opposite and 5 as being the hypotenuse for the triangle that I want to draw. So we're going to draw a triangle in and this hypotenuse's value is 5. This is going to be the other two sides to create a right angle triangle. So if that's 5, I just need to choose where I'll put my um, angle. So I'm going to put the angle x degrees just here. So opposite x is going to be a length of 2 because we know that the ratio of sine of x is opposite 2 over hypotenuse of 5. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the unknown side length down the bottom so that we know all three side lengths of this right angle triangle. So we know that Pythagoras' theorem says that h squared, the hypotenuse squared, is equal to a squared plus b squared. So we know that h squared is going to be 5 squared is going to equal and a might be the unknown so we could say that this length here is a for the moment so we're going to have a squared plus b squared but b squared is 2 squared so this gives us therefore that we have 25 is equal to a squared plus 4 so then we can subtract 4 and we would find that 21 is equal to a squared. Therefore, a must equal plus or minus the square root of 21. So just taking the positive value for now, I can replace this a with the square root of 21. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're now going to replace that a value with the value that we found before, which is the square root of 21. And we're just going to pick the positive case for now. We're going to decide later whether we need negatives or positives in our answer. So now we know cosine of x is going to equal the ratio. So any cosine is just the adjacent side length over the hypotenuse's value. And we now luckily know what the adjacent value is. It's the square root of 21. So this is going to equal the square root of 21 over the hypotenuse's value, which is 5. However, we're not quite done because we're told what quadrant we're in. So let's have a think about what that might mean for the value of cosine if x is between 90 and 180 degrees. So here's our unit circle. So this is the second part or the second diagram that we'll need to fully answer this question. Here's our unit circle. And once again, it's centered at the origin on a set of axes. And we know that the sine value is 2 on 5 or 0 0.4. So it would have a value like that where this is 0 0.4 there. And the right angle triangle here is the one that we've drawn out in this side of our working. So it doesn't matter that they're orientated slightly differently. This will still have a length of the square root of 21 for the cosine value or in fact square root 21 over 5 once we scale back that hypotenuse to be a 1 if you'd like to think about it that way. So what we can notice though is that cosine in this quadrant is negative because it's read off the x-axis. So it's positive over there but by the time we get to an angle between 90 and 180 the cosine value here is negative. So to finish up this answer we know that this is going to equal negative square root of 21 over 5. For part B, we're going to be really close to finding out what that is because we know that tan's ratio is going to equal O over A or the opposite over the adjacent. 
So that means that the tan value for this question is going to equal, or tan of x is equal to, and the opposite on this triangle is 2. So we're going to put that on the top line, divided by the adjacent, which is the square root of 21. And then we just need to decide whether tan is going to be positive or negative in this quadrant. So the tangent value, remember, is read off a tangent line that we draw to the unit circle at the point here, which is 1, 0. And to find the tangent value, we actually take this radius value here, and we trace back through, and its value is going to be somewhere down here, which has a negative y value. So that means that tan of x is going to be negative 2 on the square root of 21. So they are the answers to this question. So I hope that helps and we'll follow up with another similar example to this so you can see it done all over again. So make sure you stay tuned for that video.